bobtail. Really? The bob turtle is one of the smallest turtles in the world, and it's a habitat specialist, requiring shallow, sunny, mucky wetlands classified as fens and wet meadows. Low density seasonal cattle grazing helps to control undesirable vegetation in the bog turtle habitat and also alter the microtopography of the soil to create favorable nesting habitat. What drives these bog turtle habitats is ground in the form of springs and seeps that bubble up from the water table and saturate the ground. To have a good, consistent supply of groundwater discharge, you need open, undeveloped land because it's the land that soaks up the precipitation to recharge the water table. With urbanization, in the form of roads, buildings, lawns, parking lots, there's no recharge. Water just runs off, and sites dry up, and the turtles vanish. The bog turtle is listed as endangered within every state it occurs. A lot of the recovery um, that involves bog turtle is driven by data, as it is with uh, most wildlife. We need population data, we need status assessments, things like that. And so, how do we get that data for an elusive turtle that uh, even the, even experts have a hard time finding? So uh, we rely a lot on volunteers who are just enthusiastic about looking for bog turtles out in the wild. And uh, a lot of our volunteers come from different walks. We have people uh, that are academic professionals, we have people that are professional wildlife uh, consultants and ecologists, and then we have just people that are just passionate about turtles and bog turtles in particular. I'm like Ben Plaster and with me need height. What do you do with this data? So it goes into the database and we keep track of individuals, if they're getting injured, if they're reproductive, um, if their body condition is decreasing and if there's a mortality and it just kind of gives us census data on how the population is doing overall. All right. Point. 1603. One, six. What we find throughout the range of the bog turtle is that there's a high incidence of occurrence on big, open, pasture-based farms, a few hundred acres in size. Many of these working farms, particularly dairy and beef operations, have become sanctuaries for bog turtles. Um, this program that Jason got us involved in with the bog turtle habitat has been a big benefit for our farm. Uh, we pastured more land than we never than we ever would have any other way. The yearly payments for us grazing the property has been a big benefit for us personally. It's, you know, with low milk prices, any income adds to our cash flow. And uh, all in all, it's been a real beneficial program for our farm. As much as everybody thinks it's all about the turtle, the turtle is the catalyst for this change. But the big picture is water quality is improved with what we're saving here. Habitat for butterflies, for songbirds, all these species are getting the benefits of what we're giving the bog turtle. So it's not just for the bog turtle, it's for all species combined. So that's what we're trying to do with all of this.